In this video, we will take a look at the operation mod in greater detail. In a previous video, we mentioned that for some integer a and some natural number b, that the quantity a mod b is the remainder of the division of a by b. To help us understand the concept of mod, this video has three main goals. The first is to learn the various ways to compute a mod b. The second is to understand what remainders tell us about the answer to a division problem. And the third is to uncover various properties of the mod operation and how we can use these properties to simplify computations using mod. The first method for computing a mod b is known as the trained i approach, which we will illustrate by way of example. Let's compute a mod b when a equals 20 and b equals 3. The idea behind the trained i approach is to find the multiple of b that gets us closest to a without going over. So when a equals 20 and b equals 3, note that 3 times 6 is equal to 18, which is less than 20. However, 3 times 7 is equal to 21, which is bigger than 20. The multiple of b that gets us closest to 20 without going over is 6. Once we have this multiple and the product of that multiple and b, we take the difference of a and the answer to that product to find a mod b. So in our case, the multiple of b that gets us closest to 20 is 6, and 3 times 6 is 18. So a mod b will be 20 minus 18, which is 2. So we say that 20 mod 3 is equal to 2. The second method to calculate a mod b is long division, which we demonstrated in a previous video. Let's examine the same numbers a equals 20 and b equals 3 to show that the answer a mod b is the same using these two methods. If we input 20 divided by 3 into a calculator, we get 6.67. We only want the integer part of this answer, so we ignore the decimal point and all numbers to the right of the decimal point to get the quotient 6. To find the remainder, we subtract 3 times 6 from 20 to get 2. Since the remainder and a mod b are the same, we've confirmed using long division that 20 mod 3 is equal to 2. The final method for calculating a mod b is the division algorithm, which we covered in a previous video. Let's use the same numbers, a equals 20 and b equals 3, to confirm that the division algorithm also returns the same answer as the previous two methods. Remember that the division algorithm returns the quotient and the remainder. However, since we're trying to find a mod b, we only care about the remainder in this case. We won't show all of the work for the division algorithm. Rather, we will track the values of r as the loop is repeated successively. With these numbers, the loop must be repeated six times before the stopping condition is met, at which point the value r equals 2 is returned for the remainder. Since the remainder and a mod b are the same, the division algorithm has confirmed that 20 mod 3 is equal to 2. While this method takes more time than the previous two, it may be more efficient if a and b are large or we do not have a calculator to use long division. For some extra practice, try using the three methods just described to compute a mod b for a equals 41 and b equals 6, and again with a equals 451 and b equals 25. Using the methods above, we find that 41 mod 6 is equal to 5, and 451 mod 25 is equal to 1. Now that we know how to find a mod b, we can use the mod to define what it means for a number to be even or odd. Let n be any integer. If n mod 2 is equal to 0, then n is even since this means that n is a multiple of 2. If n mod 2 is equal to 1, then n is odd, since this means that n is not a multiple of 2. 
intuitively, this means that if we divide any integer n by 2 and the remainder is 0, then that integer n must be even. Similarly, if we divide any integer n by 2 and the remainder is 1, then that integer n must be odd. In fact, when dividing a number by 2, the remainders 0 and 1 are the only possibilities. When we first defined remainder, we said that the only values that the remainder can have are integers that are bigger than or equal to 0, but strictly less than the number we are dividing by, which in this case is 2. The only integers that are bigger than or equal to 0, but less than 2, are 0 and 1. So, any integer n is even if the remainder when dividing that integer by 2 is equal to 0, which is equivalent to saying n mod 2 is equal to 0. Likewise, an integer n is odd if the remainder when dividing that integer by 2 is 1, which is equivalent to saying n mod 2 is equal to 1. The final topic of this video is to discuss two theorems that describe how mod behaves under the operations of addition and multiplication. The proofs for these two theorems can be found in the text and will not be proven here. Rather, we will state the theorem without proof and then provide an example. The first theorem describes how mod behaves under the operation of addition. Let a and b be two integers and let m be a natural number. Then the quantity a plus b mod m is equal to the quantity a mod m plus b mod m all mod m. To illustrate this, let a equal 12, b equal 15, and m equal 5. Then the left hand side of the equation above is the quantity 12 plus 15 mod 5, which is equal to 27 mod 5, which is equal to 2, which we can find using any of the three methods described previously. To evaluate the right hand side of the equation above, we work from the set of parentheses on the inside and work our way out. 12 mod 5 is equal to 2, and 15 mod 5 is equal to 0. 2 plus 0 is equal to 2, and 2 mod 5 is equal to 2. The left and right hand sides of the equation above agree, which shows that the theorem above holds. The second theorem describes how mod behaves under the operation of multiplication. Let a and b be integers, and let m be a natural number. Then, the quantity a times b mod m is equal to the entire quantity a mod m times b mod m, all mod m. To illustrate this, let a equal 13, b equal 8, and m equals 3. Then, the left-hand side of the equation above is 13 times 8 mod 3, which is equal to 104 mod 3, which is equal to 2 using any of the methods we described previously. To evaluate the right-hand side of the equation above, we again work our way from the innermost set of parentheses outward. 13 mod 3 is equal to 1. 8 mod 3 is equal to 2. 1 times 2 is equal to 2. And 2 mod 3 is equal to 2. Since the left and right hand sides of the equation above agree, the theorem holds. Here are some examples for you to try on your own. On this slide are two examples using small numbers, and the next slide contains an example with a very large number. Use the theorems we just described to break the problem down into parts and simplify your answer. Here are the solutions to these two practice problems. In a moment, the next slide will be displayed and the answer will follow shortly after.